Hi, welcome to Emmanuel Tabernacle Church. We are excited to have you here. Whether this is your first time or this is your umpteen time since you've been coming along with us on this beautiful journey of learning the word of God. We just want to remind you, this is a Bible study. And what that means is as you're learning, we would love for you to learn with us. We also know that not only is God is doing the revealing in us, but guess what? He's doing the revelation in you as well. That Holy Spirit that God talks about is that same Holy Spirit that's not just in me, but is also in you. And we're dying to hear what God is doing in your life or how he's revealing. Even if it's not just a revelation, but simply a question. A question usually leads to revelation anyway. So come with an open heart, come with an open mind, and join us as we begin to fellowship today on this Sunday Bible study session. I also want to remind you that there is a link for you to be able to join us live. And that is the Zoom link that I want you to click on right now. We're starting at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I just want you to click on that link and you'll be able to come on live with us. And any question that you have, you'll have the opportunity to ask it. Or if you have a revelation, we'll give you, we're hoping we have the opportunity as well so that you can give it. So. We're getting ready to get started. We're getting ready to get into the fellowship, into the worship, and we're also getting ready to pray and hear the testimonials. But more importantly, we're getting ready to hear what God has set for us for today. I can't wait to see you. Talk to you soon. Sunday evening Bible study session. We're grateful to God for life and everything that he's all his goodness and mercy and his grace in our lives. So if anybody has a testimony or um or anything that they just wanted to share on their heart, you have the opportunity to do so now. If not, then we'll just get into um prayer and then getting into the word for today. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you guys doing? Very good. Oh, good evening. <laughs> good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Was the price? Are you breaking up? I wrote, I wrote over something. You could hear me. Yeah, I hear you now. You guys could. Yeah, I hear you now. Something I had read to you guys a while back, but I wrote it over. It got revised. 
So I'm going to share something with you guys. Okay. Hold on. All right. Just give me a few minutes. I'm not going to be long. Is um, it's my piece I had right before, but I revised it. The name of it is What If. What if you heard as a child, I would never be nothing in life? What if school was a challenge and a struggle? It didn't seem like no matter or anyone would care. What if you was told you're always late? You would be Something. What if the dad, what if the dad, something breaking. Something breaking. Hello? Yes, you you break you break you break out. Gladia. Do you have your hotspot on, Jean? Yeah. Um. If you can hear us, just go back and come back in. Um. And we'll see if that would work. Okay, how about now? A little better, but I can still see you're lagging. Um, I might have to. You're bouncing. Um, I think you're a little bit better now, it's, but it's showing you red bars. So that means you are having like poor internet connection right now. Um, Probably. Do you have your hotspot? Mm, wait. Like you could, if you could turn it on. I'm going to try. And you look very beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> so as she tried to figure this out, um, we're gonna do a quick prayer. Or if anybody has a testimony, I wanted to just give God a praise. We just been celebrating my brother's uh, birthday, Johnny. So you may, um, those who know Johnny, know that Johnny's gone through a lot. Um, but um, guys. God has graced us with another year. And um, there are times where we wasn't certain for John, but he's got, got a lot better. So I just want to give God praise for that. Amen. I thank you for all the prayers. Amen. Um, Amen. That's just my little testimony. I mean, it's been a good couple of months. It's been my brother's birthday, my birthday, my son's birthday. So it's a month. It's it's a is the the month. I think the month of September and October. Everybody has birthday. That's his birthday to this to today or yesterday. Uh, today's birthday. Today is sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. I remember this would be the month. Uh, past we would always end up the end of the month. We would have a birthday for everybody. That's right. I remember, those, I remember that. That's right. I think Geraldine's birthday. Uh, at one of one of your daughters have a birthday? Yeah, right? one, one after the other, I have the yeah, September. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this is the September, right? Yeah. This that's is October. October. We always used to have a... Oh, a boy, I, I forgot the Elizabeth birthday. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember we used to have the group birthday. Yeah, is a, is a follow up. Everybody. Everybody birthdays. September, around. October, November, birthday coming. Well, I forgot Elizabeth birthday. That might have been the best, the smartest idea ever to have one birthday at the end of the month for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get celebrated. 
Mm -hmm. What my father used to do. But then at least four of us had the birthday, I think, in October. I love everyone. And Jubert rests so he was his birthday was was also um a month of, a week ago, October 6th. So it was a lot of birthdays this month. Yes, sir. Um could me Jean pick up again if he's if she's not y'all could hear me now? Yeah. You could hear me better? Yes. Much better. Yes. yes. All right. Um Okay. Mm, I don't even remember where I left off. Anyway, um, I'll just read it. What if, what if you heard as a child, you would never be not in life? What if you, what if school was a challenge and struggle? It didn't seem like it mattered or anyone would care. What if you was told that all oh, you're always late and would ne and would be late? for your own funeral in a matter of time? What if you was feeling unworthy and a little hopeless little girl? What if you, your, you was given up at birth because the color of your skin? What if you was told that you're adopted and your mother is white and just left three months after birth? What if the dad that adopted you abused you and mistreated you from a taller age skin? What if you was you looked for validation from an early age from people and places that you shouldn't have been? What if your upbringing brought on more anger issues that you took that took you through adulthood and a life of sin? What if you being abused from relationships think you're getting married but just cause more anger and pain within? What if you came extremely close? being charged for attempted murder and assault with a deadly weapon on someone's life that's your heart you've been fearing? What if you didn't show love to your children as you should have been? What if you repeated hate and anger toward others that you came across your path no matter the situation? What if you suffered so much heartache and loss you're telling yourself, this is not fear. You couldn't understand why me, this is happening. What if you tried ending your life that it is just not be over quickly and thinking is way too much to endure? What if the doctor said a tumor in the brain, seizures, COPD, sleep apnea, chronic bronchitis, asthma, pre-diabetic, scoliosis, IBS, incontinent, severe sinus allergies, arthritis, memory loss, osteoporosis, bulging disc, lumps in the breast, menopause, and abuse from an early age, and mental status, you couldn't understand what's happening, where to begin. Where, what if there is weight issues, Lost of hair issues, self-confidence issues, hunger issues, ch children acting out issues, just family issues, homeless and housing issues, legal issues, physical and mental health issues, that relationship just ain't working out issues. What if you ask yourself, what's next? What should you do? What if you shut yourself off from everything that matters because you're thinking there is no hope, you just have too much sin? What if your family members is given a diagnosis and doctors not sure what to do and where to begin? What if from a very early age been working and taught taking care of very sick parents what if just being a kid wasn't an option and it's adulthood mindset, you're the next of kin? What if you're wondering, was I that bad as a kid and now I'm being punished for my sins? What if the pain of sin, you, tur you turn to drinking? 
What if you're looking for so many ways to erase this pain away and want to give up on life and no one will care if you came up missing? What if you just gave God a chance and accept him as your savior in your heart and ask him to come in? What if, just what if, what if you see God is your answer? Shouldn't you let him in? What if God has a plan for you that life you endure can help others overcome their pain and their sin? What if you see you're not alone in this battle, you're fighting inside your mind? What if there's others out there who've been through worse and overcome their battle with the Lord's help, taking them through in every way from the beginning? What if you was brought up in church and you hide all the tales of hurt behind closed doors of filth and tight as a pin? What if you felt, why should anyone believe me or listen to me? You're just this troubled kid and now an adult and feeling no accomplishment that you can show or give. What if the psychiatrist and the therapist is saying, this person has PTSD, anxiety, depression, but you're not crumbling or taking, or taking psychiatrist medications? What if you was given a chance just to talk it out and now to see there's hope for you to be happy forever, wouldn't be, it be worth it? What if you just start thinking positive, speaking life over yourself and believing there is a God that can take you through anything? What if you ask God to teach you how to pray and understand what you read in your Bible on a daily basis that the hurt will go away? What if you just look back at your life and how much you have grown. What if you see you, it wouldn't be possible without God. He has to show you how to overcome. What if you see what the devil meant for evil, God can turn it around for glory and give you double favor and honor. God can change your life. God can change your life. He can change all of your what ifs. Because of God and his glory, I am here before you to share my personal testimony on my little bit of what ifs. God can turn around any situation, turn, turn any situation around. I am no longer angry or violent. I am no longer bitter about my past of being raped or molested. I'm no longer depressed or thinking of suicides. I'm no longer worrying about being alone. I'm no longer worried about the hurtful words that was called over my life. I'm no longer looking for attention from others trying to fit in a certain crowd. I'm no longer ashamed of who I am. I am grateful there's hope for me to read and apply God's word in my life. I look forward now to a smile on my face because I never thought the day would come I could encourage someone out of a dark place. Each day God gives me is a second chance of my life increasing. The lumps in my breast and my chest is benign. The tumor in my brain is benign. The cysts in my body are non-cancerous. No seizures since the year 2013. My swollen feet are going down. Pre-diabetic and I take no medications. High blood pressure has been doing well. Being overweight from a size 20, but now I'm losing the weight. And yes, I will have a waistline because it's dropping. 
my family situation, my family situation of stress has drastically decreased. I am more blessed to see my family health issues turned around for good. I'm a, it's a blessing to breathe God's priceless air without the need of a tank and its oxygen. Looking forward in meeting my biological mother one day that gave birth to me after 53 years, which I never seen. I look forward in telling her I forgive her and understand the sacrifice of giving me up. I have seen God shield my grandchild and her uncle. She was only three years old at the time. I'm being in the elevator with her uncle from numerous rounds of bullets and not a scratch on their skin. Because I'm a child of the, the King, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord has blessed me more and more each day than my eyes could even see or my heart could even imagine. I work in financial services and have my life license and I hold my security and fire license. I'm working on owning my own housekeeping business. I look forward to being debt free and owning my condo one day. So far, so, so if I ever doubt or second guess myself about a situation, the Lord reminds me, look on how, look how he showed up and showed out. Who would have thought of me being a trouble kid inside, a ticking time bomb that was about to explode? I can only give God all the glory for what he has done. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And that's Proverbs 3 verse five and six. It took many years, but I understand now that my God will show up when you least expect it. Over the years, the Lord has blessed and delivered me, and I know there's a, a lot more to come. It says in Romans three, verse 25, but if we hope for that we see not, then we do it with patience, wait for it. The Lord has changed my life. The Lord has changed my what ifs. Because when I am feeling the pain within my body or a situation arises, I'm reminded how God has delivered me from time to time. And now I have a life of possibility. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. Watch him change your situation totally. What if it's done by non truly? Yours truly, Jean Anthony. Bye -bye. God bless. Thank you. God bless. God bless. God bless. Yes. May encourage someone's heart today. Amen. 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 Well, um, Ricardo, could you pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for another day. Thank you for this day. Thank you that you have graced us. It's an opportunity to come together and fellowship with you in Jesus' name, Lord God. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for health. We thank you for peace. We thank you for sanctuary. We thank you for shelter. Thank you, Lord God, for the small things because for many others, this is, these are the big things. Things that we take for granted, Lord God. Many billions don't have. So we thank you for these things, Lord God. We thank you for the privilege of being, um, of, of not thinking about these things. Thank you for the love that you give. 
We thank you for the peace that you have shared with us. And we thank you, more importantly, for your love and for your sacrifice for them, for us all. So we ask, Lord God, that you will continue to watch over us as we continue to learn of you, continue to learn to be like you, to be more like you, to teach others how to be like you. We ask that you forgive us for our life, forgive us for our constant failures, forgive us for our inability to reject ourselves and take you in. And teach us, Lord God, how to be more like you, Lord God. We thank you. We honor you. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, it is a, a wonderful testimony. And if we follow that testimony, we will see the same subject we are discussing is part of it. Pastor, can you pull your camera down a little bit? Maybe to recenter yourself. Is better now? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, what we are studying, this is exactly what Sister Jean just um, put out. All those if, no one could solve them. No one could really get a solution from them. And it dragged us all the way down to the dirt where we came from. Nevertheless, the answer is only again, Jesus Christ, Yeshua is the answer. And that's what we've been studying. I don't know if you have to start now. So I don't know, we start now. Yes, this is the, the answer is Christ. And this is what we are studying, the dilemma of mankind things that we cannot solve, things that we try to solve, we find ourselves in the deepest water. And that is what my sister just finished put out. And many of us face that situation, and many of us is in that situation. Many of us get out from that situation, but then the permanent one is from God. The last time we were studying, we were studying the problem that we face. And God saw it. And God is going to do something or has been done something about it. But since we are studying it, we are talking about God is planning to do something about it. The message is past, present, and future. This is what is that message is all about. It's past, present, and future. Before we were going down, we were talking before and the fifth point of our message, Yahweh prepare a body for himself to defeat Lucifer and the earth. Yahweh prepare a body for himself to defeat Lucifer and the earth. And you know all the situation problem we have because of Lucifer. If it was not for him, we wouldn't be in that problem. He put us in that problem and therefore then God saw that we cannot get out of it. And therefore he come, he's coming to do it, to fix it. 
Yahweh prepare a body for himself to defeat Lucifer and the earth. Now I want you to look Hebrew chapter 10, verse 5. I want you to look for Hebrew chapter 10, verse 5. If you have your Bible, check your Bible, please. Read it so you could see it. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 5. And someone could read again Psalm 50, verse 1 and 6, 1 to 6. One look, Hebrew chapter 10, verse 5. Another, another person look for the Psalm 50, verse 1 to 6. Yahweh prepare a body for himself to defeat Lucifer and the earth. Uh, if you find it, please, could you read it loudly so everyone that have participated could be part of it and hear it. Anyone who have the Bible, you could get it. And if you have a question, according to those verses, you could ask the question. Thing that we could answer, we will answer. Thing that we cannot answer, we will tell you we don't know. And those of us among us who have the answer will share it. So please read it for me. Pastor Sultan, you said Hebrew 10 um, verse 5? Yes, Hebrew 10 verse 5. All right. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, he said, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me. Okay. Remember what I said? He said, Yahweh prepare a body for himself to defeat Lucifer and the earth. He has a body in John chapter Hebrew 10, verse 5. This is what we just read. So if anybody, before we go to Psalm 50, verse 1 to 6, anybody has a question to a dad verse or do not understand that verse, um, please um, voice your question. Could you read it again for me, my sister? Wait. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, sacrifice an orphan, thou would, would it not, but a body has thou prepared me. In other words, God do not accept or sacrifice. Why? Uh, what do we mean by sacrifice? Giving up yourself. I say that again. Giving up yourself. No, it do not accept or sacrifice. No, you ask what sacrifice mean. No, yeah, what sacrifice mean? Well, it's two. You could put it like that. What sacrifice mean or why he does not accept or sacrifice? He do not respect or sacrifice. Well, the, I was given the meaning of sacrifice, the offering of anything to God, a consecutory right, to offer something as a gift, deity. Yeah, it is. It is. See, most of the time to give a God sacrifice, you have to kill something. You have to kill an animal. It, 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 it requires blood. This is why in the Old Testament, what we studied before, that most of the time they come with sacrifice with blood. This is why you see, as we said in verse, um, if you if we, if you look um, where he put it down, 
here, he put it then, you could see what happened here. And in and, and Genesis 3, verse 21, look Genesis 3, verse 21, see what happened here. You could read it if you find it. Genesis 3, 21. 21. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord make coats of skin and clothe them. Now, remember what he said, a cloth of skin. Uh, why, why is a cloth of skin? To cover? Yeah, why, why, why a skin is there? What do we mean by cloth of skin? What do we mean by skin? The flesh. The flesh. So if it is a cloth of skin, today what do we, what, how do we dress ourselves many times today? What do we do to have a, a coat of skin? What do we do? What is the process to have a coat, a skin coat? We put on the armors of God? No. Look at today. Today. If you go to the shop. We put give by clothing. Yeah, what is but it's a skin of clothes. It's a skin. Okay. It's a skin. You get a coat. You have a shoe. What of what a shoe make up? Material that you yeah, get material, but what is shoe makeup? So um, you had to sacrifice an animal, a shoe makeup of it, and skin leather, hide, kind. leather, which is high. They call it a skin, but they call it hide, you know, in a way. But is a is a skin, is a hide, or uh, but is a animal skin, mm -hmm. it's an animal skin. So okay. therefore, go ahead. If it yeah, is not, like, go ahead. You want me to read it over? No, that's okay. You oh. read it, it cover them. But what I want you to understand, when God said in Psalm and Hebrew chapter, um, Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 10, verse 5, it cover them with a cloth of skin. That means God has to kill an animal to take the skin of the animal to make a clothes. Okay. To cover their nakedness, to cover Adam and Eve nakedness. That means the animal give his life in order to cover that person. What do we mean by cover? Put something over. Put something over. Why we put clothes over ourselves? To cover the nakedness. All right. And the size of God, or naked, or nakedness is impurity. Is not clean. So God covers. This is why again, you see, God cannot. We cannot see God. Why we cannot see God the way he is? Because he's a spirit. He's a spirit, that's true. But why we cannot see God the way he is? Why Adam did see God before? Because he will consume us. Say that again? All right. Well, we, will... don't, we, know, we don't know if God, he... We understand that God represents himself in many ways. If you say that Adam didn't see God, they spoke to God. Right? Adam did see God, did have communication, communication with God. This is why God came in to call him. God came and called him to have conversation, whatever they have to have. But Adam cannot show off because now Adam said, because I am naked. Yeah. That's why Adam said, Adam said, I am naked, therefore I cannot come out. He hide. 
before Adam was not hiding from God, but now he hides from God. And we, go ahead. But, okay, so we understand that this is a, this is an interpretation of God, Adam's first sin. And it is his first reaction or assumption being that now that Adam is now aware that he's naked, he has to hide because he's naked, mm -hmm. but also because he's disobedient. But it's actually- Yeah, 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 yeah. Disobedient, disobedient really, you remember? Secondary. When... The idea is, it's based on the idea that nakedness is the, is the, is the, is the, is nakedness is the evil, being naked period. So he, it wouldn't be evil to Adam if he didn't know that nakedness is evil. But because he now has knowledge, he realized, oh, what, I'm naked. That's right. So, uh, the, this is the, oh, once you disobey, you open ladder doors that were closed. Once you open one door, all door open. You, in other words, you become vulnerable to many deception. Thing that you never know. Thing that you know. just just now, my sister just read that the passage that the um um testimony that she gave. Remember, she put letter if in those passage. Those passage that means the door are wide open, but. If you give that door a chance, he got you. There are people who might pass to this life and never taste drug because they never open the door. There are people who might never have been molested in life because the door was not open, but that does not mean the door is not there. So everything, is possible there, but it's up to you to open the door. That's the way it is, it's up to you. Once you get in, then you see what is in the other side. And when you see what is in the other side, you don't feel good. And this is what my sister just saying right now, if you do open the door and you face the situation, there is a way out. And, and I'm glad at the end of our testimony, he said, Jesus will help you. Christ will help you. And this is what happened here. Um, the dilemma that God saw Adam could not, look at what Adam did on Eve. What, he, what they did when they find themselves naked. Well, they did two things. One was they hid because they were afraid. Um, um, well, that was one of the things they did. Yeah, that's one. There's another thing they did. There's another thing they did. Oh, they, they got the tree. The that's right. The, the leaf. Now, in comparison, in comparison, a skin of clothes and a leaf, which one is more suitable? Which one is more durable? Which one is more is much better? The skin. You, you see the situation? Adam automatically and he already find a way, but that way is not really safer. They already find a way. But that way is not safer. So God put it a safer way for the time being. So here's where it gets kind of tough. Cloudy. Cloudy. And <laughs> if you'll allow me to ask simple questions. Go ahead. And I think the reason I do this, not so much for me, I do this not so for the grown Ricardo, but for the young Ricardo who would have asked this question quite simply. Um, and maybe for the young kids who may not do it, or 
is the simple question would be, why didn't God give Adam and Eve close from the beginning? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a very good, this is not a simple question. That's a very good question. That's a very good question. Now, could you, do you, any one of you have an answer for that? That's a very good question. Why he didn't give them a close from the beginning? I mean, if we're going to ask that question, we might as well ask the questions for all the things that are still naked. Because why don't animals have clothes on them? Because they too are walking around naked, and yet we don't question it. Not only, not only we don't question it, the animal don't even care. Well, don't care about it either. So <laughs> there, there isn't really a fall or a disconnection with them. They understand themselves to be who they are. What happened to us is, you know, which is the highlight of this text, is not only did they... Um, hide or God had to come look looking for them but they also said they were afraid and that's that's key because this is the first sign of fear that they encounter between them and God there was no fear before and so why were they afraid why were they afraid to even see him face to face it's almost like that uh, fill in the blank it's like saying that that whatever was going to happen, it was going to be devastating to them. That's right. They knew that something, something inevitable was going to come. But before the fall, there were no fear. There no. was nothing to fear that something bad or worse would come because of this action that was um, posed. So I feel when we say, when God went looking for them, is almost as it was his grace to look for them. Because why I say that was because he could have come out in his glory and in his consuming fire and allowed himself to see them and destroy them in that very moment. But instead he called out to them and, and still they, it was like almost, they were just still having a conversation that was not a real communication. Mm -hmm. it, they still felt that they were apart from one another and still trying to, and God still trying to connect with them to try to understand where are they in the mindset. And so I feel the covering, the covering was the, the additional part of the grace. It's like, okay, what you're wearing is not the sacrifice that can even protect against me because really what are they covering from that's the question right that's right you're covering what are you covering from what 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 you are hiding from right not so, just from the not just of the mind that they're hiding from but also of what god see in them or what's coming before them as well so it's like it's like me going out in the sun and the closer i get to the sun the more i'm like i feel like i need to protect from the burn or get further away from the fire in other words if that makes sense so i'm looking at him it as, makes sense it makes as, sense as this consuming fire and instead of walking towards it i'm walking away from it because now i can feel the burn or i can feel that this is not protecting me anymore but rather but rather i feel like it could kill me and so i feel like just even if this is a metaphor we can understand that if god said it many times i am a consuming fire we, when he spoke with moses he was like i cannot show my face to you because okay i want to destroy you okay in other okay. words so, okay okay and and also I was when he I'm coming, when he faced Moses, when he, Moses did ask him that same question, I want to see you. And he told Moses, you cannot see me. If you see me, you will not live. And he said, Moses, again, I will go before you. And then you will see my back and I will cover you. In fact, I will cover you. 
in order for you to see my back. You will not see my glory, but you will see my back. So God now, in that same sense, Gladia just mentioned, he protect Moses. He also protect Adam and Eve. So I think the reason I bring that up, and I'm, I'm going to hold that story, that part where you said about Moses too, it's actually interesting. It actually comes back to the point I'm going to make is that um, when I asked that simple question, what just happened- It's not a simple question, it's a yeah, very no, good question. It's a good question, but actually it's a simple question. And what happens is when you ask a question like that, then we have to actually answer it. And then what happens is we tend to find, create a whole storyline of what might've happened or why this, this and that, this and that. And the real truth to the question is why does Adam and Eve think that they, it's evil to be naked in the first place is because the writer who wrote it already assumed that it's evil to be naked. So- Well, they, I don't think uh, the writer assumed that. Well, I, mean, I think, assumed I think the, the very, I, I wouldn't think the writer assumed that because the very factor that Gladia brought, brought out is a reality to us. Well, yeah, I'm just saying, but if Moses writes it in the year 2000 BC, where we already have this, have this belief that we should be naked. No, so I wouldn't put, put it like it, that. About it. Well, I'm just going to put it like that. I wouldn't well, put, I wouldn't I'm put gonna, it. I'm just, I'm just saying that there is, why it's, why the, if you ask, think about it in that perspective, and you see it in the lightness of how it's being written from the back than front. Now we have to understand it comes from Moses. Now Moses gets this, gets is writing it. Moses writes it from his perspective, and then it's passed down. Well, not even perspective on his. I, I wouldn't say Moses writing it on his perspective. I would say Moses writing it on his experience. Right. And we don't have any um, thing written that says that Adam was given the word passed down to Abraham, passed down to. So we have to assume that it starts with Moses, right? No, I won't. I won't put it with Moses. In fact, may I say, say what you why you come up to this? Uh -huh. Moses did not write the book of Genesis. He did not write the five books. No. Moses did not, no, I'm, we must remember I said the book of Genesis. Yeah. The book of Genesis is separate from the others. Well, it's, it's part of five books, so. It, yeah, I know they do that. I know this is the five books of I, I know. I know the way, the way I understood it is Moses was told the story of Genesis. Yes, this is the, this is the study we have. The study we have, Moses, all those five books are the book of Moses. But in my understanding, There's I, in my understanding, I said from the very beginning, when I read the book of Genesis, Moses copied that book. Yeah, he copied from from, from the original uh, uh, transcript, which is from Egypt. Right, he actually from 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 Egypt, all the way from Egypt. Because we plagiarized it completely. Yeah, remember Moses study. Moses is a scholar from Egypt. He learned everything that our forefather had. I'm understand Moses' education. Why God put Moses in the kingdom? Because he was a priest, a high priest. In Not exactly that. Well, in other words, that means that he was highly educated. And no, please give me a break. Why God put Moses in the kingdom? To be educated. To be educated. When did he talk Moses? As in his adulthood. As soon Moses come out, they find Moses on that sea, on that river. The daughter of Pharaoh find Moses. When they were killing the people, 
when they didn't want the children to be any time any one of them have a child. If you have a male child, they kill him. If you have a female child, a female child, they don't kill. This was a massacre. And this is the same thing if we, if we call it today. This is the same thing happened today in a, in a reality. This is the same thing happened to most of the so-called black people. So this, this uh, recalibrate your mind and see the history of Moses and look your history. You will see this is the same thing is happening. You know what they do? You know why they call it today? Muslim did it. Christian did it. You know what, what, how they call it? Cleansing. That's the word they give for it. They call it cleansing. So most of the things that they are, were in the past, they are in the present. In the different form. Bear attention to what Solomon said. Bear attention to what Solomon said. What did Solomon say? There is nothing new under heaven. Things that was a past now coming back. Is a cycle going on. Everything is a cycle. We may think it's new, but it's not new. Those things happened in Egypt before. So the book of Genesis, God has prepared Moses. I think the, in the kingdom of the in the kingdom of the, a, 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 a Egyptian, which is the forefather of us. And they were the, black people. I think the way you kind of, the reason I bring that up is if if you actually try to read Genesis in a sense, and in that literal sense, you find yourself with these questions. But when you actually see that the point of Genesis is that each one of these events are metaphors. For instance, there's no reason to assume that God can't find Adam. So it's not a literal that God, that they're hiding from God or that God can find them. So that what you're actually realizing is what the writer is saying is that spiritually they have become naked. So naked is in itself is not an actual physical nakedness. What happens right. is that they, now that they have become aware, they are now free. They have now opened their eyes to a reality that they are now exposed to something. The nakedness is not real. It's not physical nakedness. It's a spiritual ex ex release. Or say, for instance, they were covered by God, but now they are no longer covered by God. I right. couldn't see you because now you're no longer connected to God. Mm -hmm. Because they know that they have sinned, they have now acknowledged, now that the, the truth of the reality is, that they are now op open to the wrath of God as they were not before. So it's a different, it's a, if you take it in a literal sense, you'll find you, it's going to open so many loopholes and then you. The Those loopholes could be closed. Those loopholes could be closed. Could be rip them apart and then. Let me, know, let, yeah. me give, let me give you something right there. Let me give you something right there. Um, look at the, look at that. Um, why the, the, this is fine, Lucifer, son of the morning, did it again. That's subject, the subject in Genesis 3.14. Then I come down Yahweh final verdict concerning Lucifer case. In Genesis 3.15 again. Why this is the final, uh, 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 um, why this is the final verdict? To Lucifer, Revelation 12, verse 7 to 12, verse 7 to 12. Lucifer was cast out on earth in probation for his crime. Revelation 12, verse 9. Lucifer perverse. Now I'm coming to you now. 
Lucifer perverts Yahweh creation on earth. Again, Lucifer now allude them, allude them to an artificial lifestyle. Allude them, bring them to an artificial life, lifestyle. And, and, and that I give you Genesis, and that I, uh, um, I give you Genesis 3, verse 6. Then their state, concentrate on that, their state has been altered. Their state has been altered. That means they were in different state, in different way. Their state has been altered. Check the word state for me, please. Read the word state has been altered. Concentrate on the word state has been, their state has been altered. So since their state has been altered, what happened? They and their children, they and their children be mortal. What do we mean? What do we mean by mortal? They will die. They can die because of the alt, alt, alteration. They have their state has been altered. The way the state is to change dimension. The way you walk is is not is no longer. Glad you come in with a point, which is very good. The point she come in is give, a, give an example about the animal. Do the animal state has been changed? Do the animal state has been altered? In what way? Please, please don't ask me that question because you answered that question. You have to answer that question yourself. From where? Uh, the question you're saying is, did the do the animal state has been altered in relation to Adam and Eve? Forget about Adam and Eve now. Don't concentrate on Adam and Eve. Concentrate on the reality of what we could see, of what we could um, analyze. I mean, are you saying? Are you saying? Are you asking, has this they been altered at a time or? At um, no, I don't know. I'm not saying you do the state of the animal has been altered. No, animals are still animals. In other words, you ask a question which is very good too, but I would let you to answer that question because it is good for you and before I give you the, the uh, before we come back in and analyze it. Um, in what way, you say in what way, which I think that's a very good answer too. That's a very good um, inject, you inject that part here in what way, it is a very good too. But I want you to give me the, um, um, which way you think. The assumption is before man sin. Forget right? about the weight assumption because whenever we're talking about the weight assumption, we put ourselves in jeopardize of the truth. In other we words, are not looking, we are not looking for, we are looking for reality of life. So we know there was no death before sin. Forget, no, what we are looking now, because remember, the world don't believe in nothing. If you go to the university, anytime you attach college, you attach high education, everything is maybe. It's supposed, it, it may be, it may be so. This is why we have research. Those research based in those, um, in those uh, 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 philosophical um, um, answers. We always doubt things. We always think, even when the thing is real, we still don't believe it. This is the same thing happened to Trump. 
This is the same thing happened with now. The country is breaking. The country is dying. But many, many people still believe Trump. We also say the so-called black people have the same right with the so-called white. The both of them have the same capacity of learning. Yet, you see most of the so-called white don't believe that the so-called black people have a good sense. So universities, colleges, I'd be part of them. But things that happened before me, I analyze them. It's the same thing with that virus we're talking about. A lot of people don't believe it. A lot of people don't take the, vi the, the vaccine because of that situation. <laughs> and people that have the virus find themselves in the situation very, because they don't, they don't have a head to, to take um, for themselves. So this is why I don't wait by any position. I, I, even um, what we call about the, um, the other um, uh, argument we talking about the metaphor. I, I, I study metaphor, I study evolution, I study this thing and I see all of them put you in a position of doubt. Every one of them puts you in a position to doubt things and make you make a statement that is not exact. Put you astray. So these things are not in this position. I am thinking about alter. When something alter be mortal, another word, when you change the state, Adam was not supposed to die. Man in the whole was not supposed to die. We were not supposed to die until that dog. This is what happened with Miss 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 uh, Miss uh, Miss Jean. Come up with that. If, if analyzes her word carefully, if if all the thing he put she put she put if that means if you open that door, here's what is going to happen. But when these things happen, how are you going to get out of it? How? Nobody knows. And Sister Jean come up with the answer. The answer she come up is that the answer is God. Why, why she come up with that answer is God? Miss Jean. Miss Jean. Oh, she gone. I, she give the answer why she come up uh, uh, with those and why she yes. come, why um uh, when you put the word if and all the thing that you say Diane Diane please leave those things there please don't touch them when you put the come out uh, come out leave it out leave it there leave it there leave it there when you put the word if and all the things that you've been saying, where do you get the answer for those if? Okay. You could hear me? Yeah, where do you get there? Just give me the answer, that's all. It was, it came, the whole no, thing came. Don't give me, don't give me the, the, the outing. I, I, where you get the answer for those if? From God. Okay. Point final. This is where she get the answer. The answer is that she get the answer. But now, how, how could the question I'm asking you? Why you, why you bring this thing to us? Why you share this thing to us? All that I, um, okay. 
I'm going to try to put it as simple. No, um, it's, a, it's a very explain. simple, no, it's a very simple question. No, it's a, it's a simple what, answer. One, Don't make it long. Is this is a simple answer? No, what I'm okay. So what I'm saying is, you know, when you say you've been through something, this is exactly what I'm talking with, about, my sister. On, only thing you have been, to say, I've been through it. God take me out. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's all. That's all you're saying right now. The, to me, this is what I get. You've been through it. Therefore, God take you out. So you telling people the only way they could get out from this thing is to do what you did. And what you did, you go to God. You go to Jesus Christ. And this, Jesus Christ help you. And right now, you are free from so many things. And things getting better. Simply, God is working to your life, not you don't know how they get out, but he get them out. That's all. That's 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 the bulk of this testimony you give me. That's the bulk of it. So you want people now to follow your advice. Is the advice you give me to the people, to all of us? And this is what God saying right now. If we go back to this thing. When I use the word Lucifer, I loot them, them to, to an artificial lifestyle. That means he bring them, he open their eyes to some pain that they should not get involved. And by getting involved in that, everything happened. But then flip it over, flip it over. In our experience in this world, in our own experience. When we do something which we should not do, what happened to us? Consequence. That is our own experience. Now, could we match that same experience with the same experience that Adam and Eve faced? Where there is a metaphor, where there is a thing, no matter what it may be, but I am facing the same situation that was facing before. Yeah. Yeah, because we're all Adam. We? Well, not whether we all Adam, but the thing is this, we have to be careful with that metaphor. We have to be careful well, with, the, with, with the study we do from, yeah, from yeah. the universities, from, yeah, the, yeah. Um, from the colleges, because I've been there. Well, you have to see it in this perspective, perspective is you're not, you're not, man is not being judged from Adam to you. Man is being judged from whoever, in, every individual who's born to his death. So each one of us, the trillions who have existed is still one life. It's ha only happened once. So it's, it's each and every one of us individually are gonna be judged for the same exact time frame. It's not like I can get judged because of my great grandfather. It's not like he has his time Great grandfather had 80 years. I had my father, my grandfather had eight, 90 years. My father's gonna have God willing 90 years and I'm gonna have 90 years. And then each one of our time frames is one. It's not since Adam was born. Each one of us were born at our time and we'll both all have to be judged from the time we're born to when we die, specifically. It's not really from the time we born, we're going to be judged. Well, we, we're already judged for we're born. No, well, I, I, I don't come to the salvation yet. I'm talking. No, I'm saying we're, we're already born in sin. So that's. No, whether you're born in sin, it does not matter. What is matter is that what do you do yeah. with your life? What do you do with your life? In other words, Every one of us is going to be judged according to what we do individually. I, I think that's the key to the the, the start the, the whole point of the nakedness, right? When you learn well, it, it, forget I, I won't put the nakedness. Oh, okay, one second. Let me just say when you we all had the Adam and Eve apple situation, 
We've all done it. It's all of us. We all eat mm -hmm. that. Now, if you go, if you go in the New Testament, you will see that we're going to be judged for the. I, I hope I, I I anticipated that question very good. What you are saying, we're going to be judged for this even for for the sin that we did not commit it. Send in the book. I, 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 next Sunday, I will come with a verse for you. We will be we judge for the sin, even the sin we were not committed. Uh, and also, according to the law, according to the law, there are people who are going to judge by law. There are people who are going to judge out of law who do not have a law. If you go in the book of Roman, it will tell you exactly that. There are people who will be judged. There are people who don't have law, but they have law in, in themselves. In themselves, they already have law, which with what uh, Roman are saying that you may have, you may not have a written law to follow, but your moral law exists within you to know what is good, what is bad. To know good and bad, your moral law. So that also going to be judged. That got also gone because you have to, <laughs> you, may, you may never read, thou shall not kill. You may never know that law, but stink tell you by yourself, even you in the jungle, whatever you are, don't kill. So this is intuition that which is within you from part of God law, if we may call it God law, because God law is already written in everybody. Everybody has God law in them. Now, people will die, will judge, I am not going to judge for what you do. I am going to judge for what I do. This is why, again, every one of us have to check of ourselves. Because every one of us going to pay for what you do. For what you do. I, I can't, they, that is the reason why God say, judge nobody. Why? Judge not lest you be judged. <laughs> and you say again, with the same measure you may you judge the other guy. Is the same measure you're going to judge you. So to me, if I see you do something wrong, I must not follow. Because uh -uh, you judge for what you do. Let me judge for mine. Let me judge for my. So that's the situation. Nevertheless, the mortality that come up to mankind cause all of us die. But I want to touch to that question you're talking about um, the altering of the animal. I want to touch that because that's a very good thing. That's a very good uh, um, um, observation you give by there. The animal has been altered too but not the same way we've been altered. There are animals who are not vicious. They become vicious. Just as we vicious too. Just as we vicious. But bodily speaking, the animal don't know about that nakedness we're talking about, you have to put clothes on you. They don't understand this thing. But their spirit has been altered. Mankind, he has two alterations. His spirit has been altered. His body has been altered. Remember, the spirit of man has been altered and the body has been altered. That is the reason why 
uh, no, I cannot go to that point because that point will come uh, when Jesus Christ make, make, make the change. <laughs> He's going to make the change. So I don't want to go to that now. So therefore, let us continue because those points are very good. They're very good. Always analyze things according to what you could see. No matter the philosophy that you read or you learn from universities, from colleges, from other people, do your homework yourself. Do your homework yourself and analyze things according to the way God reveal it to you to see the universe, to see the trees, to see the birds, to see the fishes, to see, because God work, praise him. What do we mean God? In Psalm 145, in Psalm 145, God said, my work, praise me. What does God mean by his work, praise him? What God mean by his work present? Help me, please. Anybody could help me. Why God, why God said my work praise me? For me, the way I take it is more like his work testifies himself. How? If you, How God would testify Himself. What's 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 beautiful about, and this is just my understanding of it. Um, the more I ask myself, how do I even breathe, or how can I allow my body to continue to breathe forever? I see within my own self that I cannot even will myself to do that, and so looking at the father who is the creator of all things he's the only one that can say i can give that breath and take that breath the only one i can't even testify for my own self that i willed myself here if that's the case i would not even want to die i would still be living in this body that i that many of us claim we have control over and yet we don't so if we do, we can't even take um, praise or credit for my own breath, so who can? And that's why I mean when I say it testifies who God is, because only He <laughs> can you say me, His words. You make me hysterical. You, you make me hysterical. <laughs> uh, okay. As I said before, and I say it again, doctors, MD, the so-called scientists, people who study the body of a man, the body of a woman, how a child is coming out inside the womb, how the child is forming, they should know God better than all of us. Because they see the magnitude, the, might, the, the, the greatness of who make those things, who form those things. These things don't happen just they happen. There must be some engineering power to make those things. These people should dance before the creator. They should praise the creator to study those things because these people study, discipline themselves to see how those things make up and they even cannot understand most of the things that been put in there. My work, praise me. That's what the Lord, the Lord say, his work, praise him. So, when we say, when God say his work praise him, could we say that our work praise us? Mm -hmm. Only if we take credit for it. 
even if we do a credit, and the most work we do is killing. The most work we do is destroying. If we do good work according to God, do you think we, we human being would be in misery? Do you think human being would um, have a difference between black and white? Do you think we would destroy the, the, the water that we drink? Do you think we will destroy the trees, the birds, the animal? Do you think we would, we wouldn't even have cemetery that much? And if somebody, remember, let me put it that way. So you could see some like little practical understanding. When I was in Haiti, when I was in Haiti, in the village that I was born, Maybe every two, three years, four years, you might hear somebody die. And that person who died, he died old age. When I was in Jamaica, in Mandeville, maybe every one year or two years, you might hear somebody die. And this person who died, he died of old age. Now, <laughs> before you born, you die. Before you come out from your mother's womb, you're already dead. In fact, we have seen today, there are children who die in their mother's womb. Why? My question is why? Why? Because of our own doing. Before, right now we have a virus and that's not the first virus we have. We have a lot of virus. Who caused those virus? Who until, who put those virus out? So those things must be put to perspective and study those things and see those things and make your mind. Make your mind who you going to follow. We become mortal. They are vanity. According to Isaiah 41, 28, 29, Job 15, verse 13, 35, we become vanity, that means since we've been diluted or we've been deviated to that lifestyle, we find ourselves, we are not getting better. We're getting worse. And not only we're getting worse, but we take the whole creation with us. It's, it's, that, it's an epidemic. We take the whole, what I mean by that, we take the whole creation with us. We destroy everything along with ourselves. <laughs> we, we destroy the whole thing. Right now, listen to this carefully. And this is facts. We're talking about facts now. That a, a, a committee, um, how you call it, the six, number six committee? Uh, uh, the committee that they talking about, Joma, try, trying to find out what Trump did. The January 6th committee. January 6th committee. You know what they are pleading for? Do you understand what they are pleading for? For Trump to be prosecuted. Yeah, Trump will be persecuted. But really, what really they are they are really um, um, pleading for? True. To save democratic party or not to, to save the policy in which they are now, to save the way of living, the law that they set could be followed. Because if they don't follow that law, we're going to have what we're going to have. We're going to have a dictator. 
We have to, we're going to have a dictator in the government. What is a dictator? Someone who does, who does his own laws. <laughs> he acting as a king. His word carry two things. His word carry two things. What are they? Two things, a word, the word of a king, the word of a dictator carry two things. What are they? Help me. Power? No. Yes, power. And the sense is power. It's true. It's true. It's true. But give it to me bluntly. Yeah. Take life. Whatever he said, whosoever he talked to, anytime you cross him, kill him. If you are with him, you are alive. And even when you do with him, he's watching you just like a hawk. As soon as you slip, you're gone. That's a dictator. And this is what they are pleading with whom? To whom? Or to whom they are pleading? To whom they are pleading? To the government? Nope. To whom they are pleading? Yes, yes, in a sense, yes. What you say, yes, in a sense, in a sense, yes, because. Uh, um, technically, technically, yes. Technically, yes. But to whom they are pleading? They are pleading to the people. They are pleading to the people, to the American people, to open their eyes to see where we going. When you say government, why I say to you technically yes? Um, because the government speaks for the people. Not only that, not only that, not only the government speaks to the people. The, the people pe put the government. Ah, the people is the government. Mm -hmm. The people is the government because the people who choose the people to put on the government. So if this is why the, the committee is not pleading to the government or is not pleading to the authorities, to the officers who, 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 who in power, is not, they are not pleading to these people. They are pleading to the people, people like you and I, common people like you and I who go vote because we, are, our action could change the ball game. Understand carefully, my, my brethren. Put yourself to, <laughs> open your eyes. Let God open your eyes and make you see things the way they are and judge them according to the way they are. Amen. Don't take their philosophy. I mean, I, I shave in that. I, I'm saying, take the same philosophy, you know, but take it with a grain of salt. You understand me? Take it with a grain of salt. And then make it out. Because the God that we have, I, I'm, 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 I'm waiting to come to Jesus. I am waiting, but the, the message is so long. The, the, that, that tackle is so long. Uh, I, I, I'm waiting to, to reach to Jesus. So <laughs> you yeah, might have to fast forward a little. <laughs> no, bring it up to Jesus. I, I could, but thing is coming to me so hard. You know what I um, feel? I feel um, that um, God is 
all powerful. And I and I feel like we we try to diminish that and try to make it feel like men is somehow superior to <laughs> in, in some context. And, and why I say that, because when God sets a plan in place, even if there is motives, the clarity and the truth is consistent. And you, 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 you will recognize him. And the reason why you recognize him is because he leave breadcrumbs of himself in everything that he puts into place. In other words, there is no reason to, even though there is, you know, the conflict is not within God and the word that God speaks, but conflict is within us. That's well, what conflict is. So when you're conflicted, whatever you see is conflicted as well, will be conflicted. And so God does not make mistakes. And even if he says he makes mistake, that is still in his measurement of what mistake means, not even in what we believe a mistake really is. And so I believe in the totality of how God even expressed himself through man, the truth is still consistent. Though manipulation, though there you believe that people have, uh, uh, you know, some ulterior motives. God would not have used that if that ulterior motive would have been the one that stood out. In other words, when he speaks and when he say what he says, it is true. It is not. And what I love is because when you, when Christ came, he, he allowed us to see where the breadcrumbs, the Bible didn't really come together until Christ pulled out all the prophecies and all the places where he was so we can finally see where was he when we couldn't find him or see him or attest to him and I feel like in this moment like when we feel so conflicted about whether or not God is speaking when we finally hear Christ when we finally see his light or you finally understand where the breadcrumb begin, you see it clear as day because you are, you are looking to not deny the truth, but to accept the truth, to, to, to now acknowledge the truth. That's the word because we're blind to the truth and we cannot see it. Even if the truth was there right in front of you, even if I had an apple right here and I said, this is an apple, you say, well, you said that's an apple, Gladia. How could I believe that this is an apple? Then God said, I told Gladia that this is an apple. And now I'm, she's telling you that this is an apple. So now I'm telling you that's what God said. And God is like saying, yeah, that's what I said. I'm trying to communicate through all of you guys in a different way. Is it still an apple to you? You could think whatever. It's you could think whatever. So the truth is never distorted in the way God is expressing it through is what I'm saying. When God speaks, when he speaks, even if he speaks through man, even if there's mistake through man, somehow he allows the truth because he wouldn't waste his time to even do this. No, but the point is when we say God work, Praise him. When we say God work, praise him. That's what we mean. Amen. When we say God work, praise him. Why you think, why you think I go all the way to the book of Genesis and I'm coming down all the way? Why you think I do that? Because many people don't understand the amazing work that God did to save man mm -hmm. from the dilemma we are. I think, I think that's the key is why Jesus Christ, um, why Jesus Christ is so plain spoken and why Jesus Christ came in the first place is because the truth be told, as he says, I've sent many before me. 
right? And the reality is, I'm, I, I take it a completely opposite perspective. I, I look into Christ as so gracious that no matter how many times we fail to understand him, he's, he still says, okay, okay, fine. I'm going to just spell it out for you myself. Yeah, but he came to just simplify yeah, it because you don't it's get it. True, it's true what you are saying. It's true what you are saying. Christ put it plainly. Because, I mean your voice. Yeah. I mean your voice. Right. And that's why he said, I am. I mean your voice. Get, get, look at what happened. Look at what happened now. And that, that's the thing I'm going to say. It's like, it, it's beautiful. You never go to, to a mega chair. Yeah. And it's still, we still, we still don't get it. <laughs> so that's the key. That's what I think you should say to you. Mm. You should say, thank God. You get it. Yeah. Thank God. Actually, what you are saying is true. Why I'm saying is true. Why I am saying what you are. Remember, now you say something now, but why I'm saying what you are saying, you are telling the truth. Because Christ came to set everything in order. And I, I think. And it's plain and it's simple. But and his, it's, his, you want to get as plain and simple as it gets? He, he decided at the end of the day, he was just giving one word and said, I'll give you this one commandment. And yeah. He and, 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 and you see, he make it very simple. And he said but, it in a way but that, he, but it's not simple. It's not simple. Yeah, yeah. It's the most hardest thing to do, which is the funny part of it. It's just, it's one he, commandment. He put it simple, but it's not simple. But here's this beautiful part of it. If you yes. So you def, but then we, we you must do all the whole, the, the whole laws, but, everything you throw it into one thing. But what we must realize. It is our duty. It is the duty of all of us that understand the magnitude of God's plan to save mankind. As much as you can explain it, as much as God put in you to explain it, explain it. Why? Why? Because God and himself don't want none of us to lose. As much as you could be wise enough to win one person to the Lord. Well, I, I will soon say that. As much as you could put it plain to the people to see the reality of life is the better. This is why you see I go all the way to the book of Genesis and come down. And the point you come up about Moses uh, thing, Moses did not, there are a lot of books in Pentateuch that are get um, their footprint from Egypt. Plenty of them. Remember, our forefather, <laughs> our forefather, we, we, if you see what God has given our forefathers, I'm not saying there's no fraud. Well, I, I just want to say this to you before you go further. We only have the story from one side, but the truth is God did not give it to one group. He gave it no. to everyone. No. We have we just have the Jewish tribes or version of it. And then in any to in totality, God didn't leave anything to chance. Everybody had the word of God from some way, some form. You remember the, the people the three kings were not Jewish, did not come from the yeah, but Jewish. It, Jewish, quote unquote. When we're talking, yeah. we're not talking about Jewish, right? Yeah. When we're talking about Jewish, in fact, in fact, remember, the word Jewish is start 
in Judaism, Judah. Judaism. And yesterday, that is way ahead, way, way in the front. Well, it's way after Moses, actually. Way after. Way, bef way after, Mo after Moses, after David, after Solomon. Right. After Solomon, that's the time in Solomon, when Solomon died. That's the time the tribe divided. Israel been divided. And when divided, divided, we find Israeli, we find Judah. Which is because of that, because of that, the division, the Israeli, which is Samaria, and then Jerusalem, which is the Jew. That's the time the Jews start to come up and call themselves Jew. But understand carefully, my dear brother, when you refer about Jew, what is a Jew? And that's a question I ask many Jews. Anytime I talk to them, what is a Jew? Hmm. A Jew is only one tribe. Well, it's a part of a tribe, not even a full tribe. It's... No, a Jew is a, it's a tribe because remember when they divided the, 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 the tribe of Manasseh yeah, okay. and the tribe of Judah linked together. So when you say the Jew, you prefer, you're not even talking about Manasseh, try, have a try. Mm -hmm. So the, this division here caused people come up with Jew because the king of Reboam, uh, uh, Jeroboam or Reboam um, become the king over there. Israel go down to the captivity. But then when we're talking about the Jew, what is a Jew really? A Jew is just a tribe. And if you are refer to a nation, what is the name to use for the nation? Palestine. In Israel. Israel. Well, it, was, it wasn't even Israel. It was Palestine for a long time. No, Palestine, that's the beginning mm -hmm. before they conquer. Yeah. Before they conquer, they, they, the Palestine was before they conquer the 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 um the Melis, the 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 um Mediterranean or part of Africa, a part of Africa, I call it because all part all that is Africa anyway. They call it changing the world, they call it Melis. But anytime you're talking about a nation, you're talking about Israeli. Why are we talking about Israeli? What is the purpose of being Israeli? Because that's the name that was given to Jacob. That's the name God gave Jacob. And that's the name also going back to Abraham when he said, all nations shall be blessed and I will make you a nation. He make Abraham a nation. So Israel is the point. But nevertheless, um, my point almost finished. You call me back to send me back to those points there, and I'm fin I try to finish it because it is. Uh, uh, anyway, now Yahweh prepare a body for himself to defeat Lucifer and the earth. And then Hebrew 10 15, Psalm 50, verse 1 6. Now, to come easier, I say Yahweh will become a man. Yahweh will become a man. In Matthew 1, verse 20, 20, 22. Matthew 1, 20 to 23. Read it for me, please. And then we soon finish. Matthew 20, Matthew 20. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 to 23. Anybody could read it, um, read over there for me, please. Anybody else? Naomi, could you get a read? I don't know, maybe sleepy. Luke 131, 35. You said Matthew 1, verse 20? 20 to 23. 
But while he while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from, the, from their sins. Now all this was done that, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord and the prophet saying, by the prophet saying, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Okay. That is a, a dream. That's a vision. But see what the vision do. It refer back to all things that I've been saying to you from the beginning. The prophet. He refer back to you. In other words, he trace back. The angel tell the, 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 the man that all those things will come to pass. And that's why I put Yahweh prepare a body. Yahweh will become a man. Yahweh will become a man. They use the word Jesus, but then that will be fixed later on. Now read for me Luke 1, verse 35. Luke 135. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of God. Now, what you make up of that? This is events that happening to give information what is happening. How that child going to come out and what happened to that child. And this is why I put Yahweh, God, will become a man. Yahweh will become a man. And that we go further. And those scriptures I'm giving you, I'm giving you, let us read Zechariah uh, chapter 2, verse 10. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 10. Zechariah 2, verse 10. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For lo, I come and I will dwell in the midst of thee, said the Lord. I come. I will dwell in the midst of thee. Who will come? Yahweh will come and I will dwell in the midst of thee. Now, this information I give you there is to show you how God already leave his footprint all over to mention, to talk only about Yeshua or Jesus. To mention just, he don't just come. He left his footprint. And he give information what he going to do. So when those things happen, you don't tell me you didn't hear. You didn't have any information. You give me surprise. He don't give no surprise to no one. He tell us what is happening. So Yahweh now will become ignorant. 
His name, now I want you to go, Yahweh will become a man, uh, Matthew. His name, his name is, we go looking for his name now. The name that he going to talk or he going to take to come in this world. His name is Yahweh, Ye Yeshua. His name is Yeshua, high priest, Messiah, anointed one. His name is Yeshua, high priest, Messiah, anointed one. Look at Zechariah 3, verse 1 to 2, 1 to 10. Zechariah 3, verse 1 to 10. Oh, glad you are gone. I, I missed a oh, glad yeah. you could you help give me some reading. The other sister is Miss Jean. I need some more people to read. Hi, gay. H J J. I A I I get two verse two. It's a Haggah. Your oh, Haggah, Haggah two verse two. Um, Zechariah three verse one ten. Ezra three verse two. Somebody come in. I need people more. Miss Jean, she's, she's not here. Read for me, Je Zechariah 3, verse 1 and 10. Ezra 3, verse 2. Let me take Ezra. Anytime you find those verses, you could read it for me, please. Zechariah, what? Zechariah 3, verse 1 to 10. Um, Ezra 3, verse 2. Then Joshua, Joshua, the son of Josadak, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatil. And his brethren arose and built the altar of God of Israel to offer burnt offerings on it, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. So this is a, a, a Ezra, which one you reading? Ezra 3, verse 2. Is Ezra 3, verse 2. That's Yeshua. Why Yeshua? He's the high priest. He's the high priest. Um, uh, um, uh, read uh, Zechariah 3, verse 1 to 10 for me, please. See now the Lord, Lord of, Lord of armies, is going to take from Jerusalem, Judah, and every kind of support and their entire supply of food and water. Uh, which one you're reading? What, 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 what chapter is this? Which no, chapter? This, this is Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. Isaiah, Isaiah, right? Not, Isaiah, not Isaiah. Isaiah, not Isaiah. Zechariah. Oh, oh Zechariah. Zechariah. Oh. Zechariah 3, verse three, 1. Three, verse 1. To 10. ten. Yeah, 3, verse 1. Then he showed me, then he showed me Joshua. Jo Yeshua. Oh, okay, Joa, the chief of priests. Standing in front of the messenger of the Lord, Satan, the accuser, was standing at 
Joshua Whiteside to accuse him. Verse 2, the Lord say to Satan, I, the Lord, silent you, Satan. I, the Lord, who had choose Jerusalem, silent you. If this man like a burning long, long snatch from a fire. Continue, verse 3. 3 to 10, where are you? You are in verse 5. I say the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire run about, and I will be the glory in the midst of all. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of, of the north, say the Lord, for I have spread you abroad of the fourth wing of the of the heaven, say the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwell with the daughter of Babylon. That Isaiah 3, Zechariah 3, verse 1 to 10. Sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing. I'm reading the wrong thing. That Zechariah 3, verse 1 to 10. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan is standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord will build thee, O Satan, even the Lord that had chosen Jerusalem will build thee. Is not this a brothel plug out of the fire. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garment and he stood before the angel. And he answered and he spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garment from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have clothed thy iniquity to pass. I have caused that iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I say, let them set a fair might upon his head. So they set a fair might upon his head and clothe him with a garment, and the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protests unto Joshua, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep the, my court, and I will give thee place to walk among these that is stand by. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy father that sit before thee, for they are men, one they are. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch, For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall the seven eyes, behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, say the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. And that day, Say the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Now, this is a prophecy. The word Joshua here is the same word Yeshua, is the same person. 
we're talking. We're talking about the same person. Joshua and Yeshua is the same person. Joshua filthy. Right. What you take happened to Jesus. What did Jesus do? What comparison we have to Jesus with the high priest? Five minutes. What is the comparison between Yeshua and Jesus? What did what what God did to, to Yeshua, the high priest? Well, Joshua in the book of Zechariah, you mean? Joshua, yeah, in the book of Zechariah. Joshua and Yeshua is the same person. Yes, yeah, same name. The word of Yeshua. Yeshua. So, yeah, it's the same person. But what did God, what God did to, to Joshua. No, you're saying, you're saying Yahushua in Zechariah is, is... He's the same person. Jesus? No, no, no. Well, Jesus is a name oh, given okay, yeah, today. Yeah. No, no, I'm saying, okay, yeah. You're saying the high priest, Joshua, yeah. Yeah, Joshua. Jesus is a name they give today, right now, translated the name of Jesus. It's but yeah. that's the name that is originally given for Yeshua, the one we call Jesus Christ. Right. So, That's the right, this is the name for it. But now, what did God did to Joshua and uh, uh, to Yeshua in that particular passage? What happened to Yeshua? In chapter three, right? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah what happened to him in chapter three? Especially verse... Um, Verse, verse, verse four. He answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, behold, I have caused thine in the equity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of remnant. He took off his... The filthy clothes. And we call them what happened to Yeshua? What happened to, to Yeshua, Jesus Christ? We talk it. What happened to him? He was also taken. He was also filthy. We made filthy. <laughs> we yeah. make him filthy. Right. He took on the filth. You're going to see. I wish I could come back. You could see. We make him filthy. Yeah. Well, that was the plan. The plan is to take, at least take away our filth. Because he is always he is un, 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 untaintable. So he can restore and we cleanse us because <laughs> he can never be filthy. No, you see, so this is why, this is why in the book of Isaiah said that he's going to take all iniquity, yes. lay on him. In other words, all iniquity will lay on him. Remember, Christ has office of high priest. Christ has two offices right now. One is high priest. Two is a king. Three, I have a, I have a question. Go ahead. About, about, uh, is this passage that you just read here? From um, Zechariah chapter three, is that is that a prophecy that happening to is 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 standing by? Uh, I mean, is that a prophecy or uh, yeah. coming up? Uh, yes, yeah, that's why my sister. That's why I told you. That's why I follow the message. Follow the message. Follow okay. the message. Yes, when I say Yahweh, I'm talking God. Prepare a body for himself to defeat Lucifer and the earth. Yahweh will become a man. Yeah. Yahweh will become a man. And then I go to say to you, he is, he is, he is a man. He, no, he, 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 he will become a man. And Yahweh will be a man, will become a man. That's his part. Um, that's a, pre, a um, future. 
I'm talking in the future now. So when we go back to his name is Joshua. So I'm giving you the name that was supposed to be to him when he came into this world. Now, the people changed the name of Yeshua to Jesus. So be careful we don't confuse. But we know that the name is, is the high priest. Multiple, there's two high priest named Joshua, plus the first. Joshua. That's right. So it's a That's very right. famous name. But that's, we're probably going to have to close here. Uh, it's 7.15. 7.15. I, I, I have to go. You guys have to follow me very close because if you are not with me, you're going to lose. That's why I take my time to write it down point by point so you could follow those points and then you could see the connection. It's the connection I want you to see. God bless you. Father God, we just want to thank you for bringing us here today in your presence and the word that you've been revealing to each and every one of us. We ask that the Holy Spirit that started the work in us, Lord Father God, in the revelation that, of course, that it continues to do so, Lord Father God. We know that the Holy Spirit abides with all of us, Lord Father God, only if we allow him to use us, Lord God. Yes, sir. And so, Lord God, we are asking you to continue to use each and every one of us according to our faith, according to our will, Lord Father God. And so we just thank you for a revelation. We thank you for truth, more importantly. And Lord Father God, as you are getting ready to depart and separate, may the Holy Spirit continue to abide with us and protect us, Lord Father God. We thank you for all that has already been said, been said and everything that is coming, more that's going to be revealed unto us, Lord Father God. We receive it and we're grateful for it, Lord God. We thank you for all of this and we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Guys, thank you again for being a part of the Bible study, Sunday Bible study mm -hmm. session. We will be live again next week at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we look forward to seeing each and every one of you as a part of it. Until then, you be blessed. We'll see you then. Have a great one. Bye-bye. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.